Um, good morning and welcome to the Center for Strategic and International Studies. I'm Steve Morrison. I'm the Senior Vice President here and head up the Global Health Policy Center's work. A special welcome also to those who have joined us online. Um, a number of our colleagues here at CSIS put in uh, an enormous amount of effort to bring this program together, and I, they deserve some special mention. Uh, Janet Fleischman, who for the past 10 years has pioneered our gender and family health work, uh, has spearheaded this, joined with Catherine Streifel. Others from CSIS who've made quite an enormous contribution, C Carolyn Schrote in pulling this together today, Travis Hopkins on the communications, um, Alexandra Sassoon and Ariane Maladzadeh have helped us, Jesse Swanson and several others. Many people came a long distance, a particularly long distance to be here today, most notably Senegal's Minister of Health and Social Action, Dr. Awa Marie Cole Sec. I'll say a few words of introduction for her uh, when I get to the end of, uh, of my remark, brief remarks here, but um, she, uh, she's really the uh, centerpiece of the program today, and thank you so much for, for coming and being with us. She's joined by several others um, who've come from, from Senegal, Bokar Mamadou Daf uh, from the ministry, uh, who's been a, a, a lead personality, and we'll hear more from him. F Fatimata Si from the Ouagadougou Partnership, uh, Ramo Tudlai Diom from USAID uh, Dakar. Um, from London, we're joined by Micah von Kim, Marie Stopes International, who just completed recently five years of work in Senegal. Coming from the West Coast, uh, Nomi Fuchs Montgomery and Perry Sutton from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and Margot Fonestock from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. And of course, from North Carolina, Pop Gay, a close friend from IntraHealth, uh, who has been with us for a very long time as a friend and partner. We're relying on all of these folks to pull programs of this quality and timeliness together, and we're very grateful to each and every one of you. Um, Francophone West Africa is increasingly important and increasingly attracting attention. Obviously, the Ebola crisis of last year and the con continuing recovery uh, work associated with that has put a new spotlight on it. But it's also very, very important for what we'll hear today, which is this compelling and powerful story that Senegal presents. Um, and uh, we chose months ago to, to, to try to tell that story here in Washington uh, for a good reason, because we think that Senegal possesses a, a powerful story of prioritizing health, of success and momentum, especially around family planning, of strong country leadership, exceptional strong leadership, uh, in the midst of a stable democracy, a place that is open and accountable, uh, a place that is prioritizing maternal and child health while advancing access to family planning. It's the hub of Francophone West Africa. It's a leadership. What happens there uh, matters significantly for the neighboring states and beyond. And there are concrete results that are, that are coming forward, as we will hear today. Uh, the contraceptive prevalence rate alone has risen in recent times from 12% to over 20% and heading towards the target of 27% this year. That's a major gain. The potential impact of expanding access to family planning could translate into lives saved, abortions averted, and educational and economic opportunities improved for women and girls and for their communities. Uh, the Senegal's remarkable commitments to improve access to family planning has also provided the opportunity for strategic partnerships to form between Senegal and the US government, particularly USAID, which has really distinguished itself in this period, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the UN Population Fund, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. It's opened the way for many new partnerships with implementing the implementing partners that are here today. We know there are complicated challenges that lie ahead for Senegal. We'll hear about those today. There are, there are barriers and challenges that all of us need to focus upon. For the U.S. and other donors, uh, the, the big question is ensuring the continuity of commitment and investments in family planning and making sure that, that, that the significance, the impacts, the cost effectiveness, and the quality are known and understood here in Washington, and that the base of support among a sensible group of uh, bipartisan supporters is there and is preserved and, and advanced. 
We know ultimately greater government financing and private sector support will be essential for these programs. And that, that means private sector within Senegal and government support from the Ministry of Finance and the President, uh, Macky Sall himself. We'll hear more today about the need for special focus on youth, on engaging uh, successfully and effectively and routinely imams and other community leaders, engaging the private sector, mobilizing and, and sustaining the commitment and interest of volunteers. The stakes are very high for Senegal and for the sub-region and the need for continued progress to sustain the momentum uh, in this period. This brings us now to, 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 the, to our, our, our keynote speaker who uh, has agreed to both open and close today's session. Leadership is arguably the sine qua non. It's the most essential factor in driving towards success. And we have with us today a truly remarkable and revered leader in health, Dr. Awa Marie Colsec. She is a mother, she is a medical doctor, she's an activist on women's rights, she's a global implementer, she's the source of the global vision that we have today on malaria control, on family planning, on Gavi Alliance and immunization and others. She has been Minister of Health and Social Action of the Republic of Senegal since, 19, uh, since 2012. In that period, she has shown very great courage She's shown extensive innovation. She's empowered her colleagues. She's changed fundamentally the national dialogue under, underway in Senegal on women and children's health. She's carried that dialogue to countless communities within Senegal. She's been indefatigable. Um, and that is no surprise for those of us who know her and who've had the honor of knowing her for the long course of her career. She brought the same passion, the same determination, charisma, and perseverance to the post of Executive Director of Rollback Malaria, which she served in that role from 2004 to 2011. More recently, she's shown those, those, those great qualities in her role as a Gavi board member, as a member of the Steering Committee for Maternal, Newborn, and Child Health, as one of the, one of the driving personalities behind Family Planning 2020, and in this most recent period of crisis in helping inform the WHO response as the situation worsened and it became uh, so critical that informed personalities in the region, like the minister, were there to help advise. We're very blessed that she'll share her thoughts with us now at the opening and then as we close in the keynote that she will, do, she will provide us then. So please join me in welcoming the minister to open things up this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, bonjour. Um, I am not sure that what has been said is real, <laughs> but I'm trying. And I would like to just convey the strength of the people of Senegal, of the government of Senegal, and of the head of state, President Macky Sall. Thanks to all the partners who are here, maybe others are not here, but all those who are really supporting our health programs, and particularly the family planning program. I will, at the end, go into more details, but I think that we are all here to listen to these panels where we will have a lot of information. But Thanks to the Center for International Studies for this excellent initiative. We all have been in the field. Some of us are also at global level. But uh, to be together at the same time, those who are working on a day-to-day -day basis in countries, but also those who are coming visiting us, and those who are just supporting us from far, to have all these people together. It seems to me that it is a very important opportunity, and I hope that all the discussion we will have will help us to 
do more and to do better. I think that we will have to exchange our experiences, but also the success we have. A lot of people are uh, insisting on good things happening in Senegal, but we are all so very convinced that we need to do more and we need to overcome a lot of uh, challenges. And uh, by having this frank discussion, this will help us again. My problem is always to say to do more, to save more lives, because we know that a lot of women are still dying uh, by, by giving birth, and this is unacceptable. It is why we will be continuing to be very uh, uh, strong in what we are doing and uh, try to keep to have more people supporting us in this fight. I ha we have here decision makers, we have experts, we have people uh, working in operation. We have, in fact, all the family planning family. And I think that we will together uh, do a very good job. Let me just put on the table some of the environment in which what we will say will be really linked to. First of all, in Senegal. Senegal is really experiencing a rising population growth with a majority of young under youth under 20 years. And uh, some last uh, studies have shown that we have almost more than 60% of children, of people under uh, 25 years old. This is all these people now are facing limited opportunity to access to employment and social services. It is why the President Macky Sall is very now really very focused on the demographic dividend. We need to do something. We cannot continue to have this population growing and we don't have to give them, we cannot give them all jobs. We cannot nourish all these children, and we, it is why we have also a lot of malnutrition, etc., etc. So this is very important. But we have been part, and we have uh, done a lot of initiatives in this health sector to try to overcome this situation. We have a national health development plan until 2018 where we would like to see the reduction by two-thirds of maternal mortality and three-fourths for children under five. We have also a roadmap to reduce maternal and child mortality, and we will have to do the evaluation at the end in 2015. We, are, we have been engaged also to the Ouagadougou partnership in 2011 and to the Family Planning 2020 in 2012. We are now really repositioning family planning in Senegal. And we have a, a very short, accelerated plan from 2012-2015. And our objective is really to double the rate of uh, uh, contraceptive coverage. And we would like in 2015 to go from 12% to 27%. Those who know Africa can say that if you compare it to some countries where they are at 70% or 80%, um, it is very, uh, I can say, a small number. But we need to see also from where we are coming from. And if we are continuing in the way we, we, we are starting, because in 2012, we had 12% of coverage, and in two years, we have been now reaching 20% of coverage. So this is showing that we are really uh, doing a lot 
not only the government, the NGO, the civil society in general, the private sector, and all the partners really supporting us. And this is, I, I am sure, where we will uh, do a lot of, uh, we have a lot of results. But I want to tell you also that we have now in Senegal what we call the Plan Senegal Emergent. This is our plan for economic growth in the short and long term. And uh, human capital has been key and center. And it is why we have health and education very predominant in this uh, plan. It's just to say that now the health sector, family planning is really part of our work. And I would like to let you now look at the film, look at, the, uh, listen to the panel, contribute to the discussion, and I am sure that a lot of things will be presented, uh, but also we will look at what are the challenges we have on our way to the success we are all hoping that we will reach. And uh, I would like to wish you a very productive session. We are, I will be here all along, and uh, maybe you will have time to listen a little bit to what they call my key, not speak, but I think it will be more a sort of summary and maybe some word of uh, hope uh, for Senegal, but also for all the people who are helping us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Minister. And as Steve had said, we are so honored that you could be here today and that all of our guests from afar and from near could come and join us for this important session. I want to just say special thanks to Catherine Streifel, who has been so fundamental in all this work on Senegal here at the Global Health Policy Center, and to the whole team at, at the CSIS Global Health Policy Center, uh, especially to the leadership of Steve Morrison, who makes this event and this program possible. When I was in Senegal in November, I had the pleasure to meet with the Minister of Health, who is with us today, and as she said, we'll hear from more later in the, in the morning. And in our discussion about family planning in Senegal, I asked her if she had a message for the Obama administration and for the U.S. Congress. And at that point, she switched from French to English, and she looked at me and said, yes, we can. <laughs> Her government is clearly committed to expanding access to family planning and has set ambitious targets, much of which was lauded at the London Summit for Family Planning in 2012. And her team, led by Dr. Duff, who is also with us today, has gained the respect and admiration of Senegal's partners in how they've taken charge of the family planning program. And there is, as we've said, much to celebrate in terms of Senegal's progress. Senegal launched a national family planning strategy and doubled its budget for contraceptives. And the donor support has encouraged innovative approaches. And the results, as we've, as we've heard, have been exciting. Senegal's CPR among married women has increased from 12 to 20% with a 4% gain in 2013 to 2014 alone, which is very impressive. And we hope to hear more today about what the government, other donors, and implementing partners have learned about what accounts for this progress and how we're learning these lessons and using the data to make adjustments and further progress going forward. Especially noteworthy have been the partnerships between the public and private sector in Senegal. The informed push model, which we'll hear more about later today, has dramatically reduced the perennial problem of stockouts of contraceptive commodities. Social franchises and mobile outreach clinics are expanding women's access to a wider range of contraceptive methods, including long-acting methods. And the introduction of Cyana Press is uh, the new simplified injectable contraceptive could transform access at the community level. Within the public sector, USAID has been promoting the integration of family planning with immunizations and is supporting more frequent data collection to support decision making. As we've also heard, many challenges lie ahead for Senegal and for its partners. The challenges in Senegal are complicated by social, religious, and economic factors. 
Resistance to family planning from some religious leaders is a difficult and sensitive issue, and their support will be critical to engaging men and to the overall success of the program in Senegal. Addressing the reproductive health needs of young people and uh, with the significant proportion of the population that is under 24 right now has important demographic and, impl and economic implications. And these young people bring attitudes on family planning and reproductive health that often diverge from religious leaders and political leaders, and we have to find how their voices can be heard. Finally, the questions of sustainability and institutionalizing the government's commitment to family planning will be very important as we move ahead. For the United States, Senegal shows that the investments in family planning lead to important results reductions in maternal and child mortality, critical support to country leadership, and leveraging U.S. investments with other donor and private sector contributions. So there's much for us to discuss today, and I look very much forward to hearing from all of you in the uh, Q&A that will follow. But now I'm delighted to share with you our new video about family planning in Senegal. We filmed this video in February, to bring the voices of Senegal, Senegalese women into this policy discussion and to ground us in some of their realities before we begin our own deliberations. The video follows a young woman named Antaba who lives in a poor urban area of Dakar in Gedewai, and she describes why she decided to access family planning and why these services mattered in her own life and for women's health and empowerment in Senegal. Through her story and through the voices of Senegalese champions for family planning, government and NGO health workers, an imam and the minister of health herself, the video illustrates why these new approaches to expanding access to family planning <clears throat> in Senegal uh, are so important and what are some of the challenges that lie ahead. Before we show the video, I want to acknowledge our very talented videographer, Johnny Harris, uh, who could not be with us today, but hopefully is watching on the live stream the assistance of Sam Ellis in our ideas lab who helped with the editing, and to our wonderful team in Senegal, Sheikh Mane, our second cameraman, Buguma Fall, who was our wonderful translator, assisted in Washington by Jenaba uh, Gay, and uh, special thanks to our, the Senegalese Ministry of Health for their support for this project, to Mary Stopes International and IntraHealth for their assistance and guidance along the way, and especially to the women and the men in Gedewai who were so generous with their time and insights. So let's watch the video. I am Gedewai is one of the most populated part of Dakar region and we have many vulnerable groups who didn't have access to health facility. The issue is the Urban Reproductive Health Initiative. It was funded by Bill and Melinda Gate Foundation. We focus on both improving the self-service delivery, but we also focus in a strategy to demand creation using the religious leader, using the community leader, Ak projet UCB, nous sommes donc nous avons confiance pour nous. Nous avons une vraiment de CPR is a contraceptive prevalent rate. Uh, it means the 
number of women who presently has a modern contraceptive method. That the Senegal which a CPR of 20%. Um, that's a big progress for Senegal. Frankly, I do think that this progress are still fragile and we need more resources from both the government but also from our donor to reach the objective of reducing the maternal mortality rate. Mom, I to I I to ndax we have a lot of obstacles, but we have also a lot of opportunities. So this is for us in our vision in Senegal and in the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, very important to have the link between family planning and maternal mortality. Um, this is also important not to link family planning only to the woman, but link it also to the child. Wow, because I'm going to buy a little bit of 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 a I am very optimistic for Senegal. This is a way to give women all their capacity to show their potential to play their role in the society. So I'm going to ask the first panel to please come up. So welcome to the first panel. Can you all hear me okay? Um, I'm not going to go through the bios of our distinguished panel because you have them in front of you, but needless to say, we are delighted that they could be here to join us in this panel to talk about the opportunities and the challenges of implementing family planning programs in Senegal. And we are joined by Pap Guy from IntraHealth, Dr. Daf from the Ministry, and Micah Van Min from Murray Stopes. So we really have a fantastic group of speakers here to get us into some of the really important issues and innovations that are taking place in Senegal. And we're going to talk for a while, and then at the end we will open it up to Q&A, so you'll have an opportunity to ask your own questions so we can get into some more of the detail. Um, but let's start with Dr. Daff, who has traveled the farthest to be here, and who, as many of you in the room know, has been a real champion for family planning in Senegal, and has really won the admiration of so many of us. Um, and perhaps to start out, Dr. Daff, um, what are some of the key reasons you think that Senegal is progressing? What are some of the programs that you have helped oversee that account for Senegal's success? Thank you, Janet. Good morning. I think Senegal, thanks to the leadership of the Minister of Health, 
use the participatory approach throughout the whole process of developing, implementing, and monitoring the national plan for family planning. All stakeholders have owned this plan. In particular, the political will manifested in our well-known role in London Summit. The strong ownership of the plan in the regional and the district level. Consultations with different actors, NGOs, civil society, technical partners, and financial partners. Implementation of monitoring plan with regular meetings about family planning services delivery, about demand creation, <coughs> and about security, uh, contraceptive security. Regional reviews each trimester to monitor the progress has been made. And we have the opportunity to have what we call a continue DHS that gives us annual data on program performance. So this lead us to go through uh, to 12% in 2012 to 20% in 2014. We know that uh, many interventions has been done, but I will mention some of them. The first one is we did, we did in differently in terms of uh, delivery services are the focus on long-acting methods. The second one, we, we talked about it to, in the film, is targeting the urban area with the Urban Reproductive Health Initiative. And also, we introduced the initial offer of pills and injectables in the, level, uh, the community level. We have already put together the framework that we told 3D, decentralization, demedicalization, and democratization. This helped to ease the access for family planning services and commodities. We also integrated services like immunization and family planning. I think Pap Guy will talk a little bit about that. And also we did the mobile services, strategies with MSI, and maybe Mike uh, will, will talk about that. And we did uh, differently on the commodity, com commodity security, like the inform push model, and also the approach what we call Jegesina. It has been led by our central uh, Dasha, which we call uh, PENA. We introduced the Sayana Press. To the demand creation, we had a national campaign of communication known as Moitunef. That means birth space. It, uh, it, it is very crucial. I have seen some of uh, Adamas Mambo who are already here, and I talked about that yesterday. Uh, this campaign is. Uh, has been implemented by Aremas, who, which is a local NGOs, and we get a great successful on that. We have also a strong commitment for community health workers, like Bajenugor, uh, and so on. And we had also the religious, even they are not uh, taking an official position, they support what we are doing when we talk to them. We need for the future to strengthen the community activities by the weekly market. This is an opportunity that I'm talking about for two years now to my, my partners to support that because we have around 5,000 local communities and each week we have a weekly market there we can use this opportunity to use uh, mobile strategies maybe pro to support uh, the women and the community level. And I think it is important also to extend the injectable uh, in the community level. The multi-sectoral uh, multi approach is also very important. 
we are trying to, we hope that in this year, 2015, we will uh, develop our strategic plan since this one is ending uh, this year, going to 2016 since 2018. And on that, we will talk about religious, youth, and the multisectoral approach. And maybe also we got an opportunity this year by midwives, which has uh, hired, uh, thanks to the partners who support us, they are doing also uh, mobile strategies. If we can extend it on to all the country, it will be very helpful. And uh, as the minister said earlier, you know our challenge is to reach the seven point remaining in this year. What we uh, uh, call, we, we talked about uh, earlier, if we gather all that we think we can achieve the, this objective. And uh, maybe we talk also about Africa, West Africa. Our experience uh, is here. It is very difficult to talk about what we have done, but we know we share the same culture and the same environment with the Francophone countries uh, in the West Africa, and uh, Senegal can help those countries by sharing his own experience. Uh, thanks to Partenaria de Wogadougou, some of them have, has already started to do so when they come to our annual review. Uh, just mentioning that there is two difficult problems to address, the issue of religious and the issue of youth and adolescent. Uh, so it is a very sensitive question, but we know we have to do it, and uh, we hope we'll find the way. Uh, in summarizing, the family planning is progressing in Senegal. We have found the way forward. Uh, we need to accelerate our work, and we hope that in 2020 we reached 45%. And uh, to achieve that, we know also we need the support of everybody here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dan. <laughs> so let me now turn to Pop. Uh, obviously, IntraHealth is the main implementing partner for the government in family planning. Um, and you have helped introduce some of the important innovations, the informed push model, work in public-private partnerships, the integration program under USAID, engagement with civil society. Can you speak a little bit about IntraHealth's work and why it has been so influential in, in Senegal? Well, thank you. Thank you, Janet, and thank you, CSIS, for putting together this. What I would like to do, actually, is um, pick up where Dr. Duff just left, is sort of looking at the bigger context of Francophone West Africa. Because in my opinion, the interesting part of the discussion today and the work being undertaken by Senegal is that maybe, maybe for the first time in the, in the longest time, we now have an opportunity to really not only move the needle, but expand family planning and highlight the role of family planning in the economic development agenda, in finding employment for youth, in dealing with a lot of the issues that the continent is, is dealing today. The reason I why I wanted to do that is because we are in a time of history where Africa is on the rise. Uh, and despite the, 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 the continuing negative press and, and all of that, this is the continent that has shown faster economic growth than any other parts of the continent. And uh, we are seeing uh, 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 a new different workforce. We are seeing very vibrant, intelligent, smart uh, youth. We are seeing a rise of entrepreneur, social entrepreneurs in the region. So I think we have an opportunity that we haven't had in a long time to highlight why it is extremely important to focus on family planning. Let me offer a little bit of history because uh, some of us, uh, some, some of, of us gray hair and many of the champions in this room have been at it for a long time. And uh, unfortunately we have seen, and I hope we can learn from those lessons, 
we have seen go, the, the region going from really a period of momentum in the 1980s when things were beginning to pick up. There was sort of a, a mobilization around the countries. There was a commitment to family planning through developing policy guidelines. And, and then suddenly, there was a stop. And suddenly, there was actually a, a, a big, uh, uh, not only a, a dip. We, we didn't see any movement at all in family planning. We didn't see, and we lost ground. And several of us. Uh, thought a lot. There was a lot of discussions about HIV AIDS, how the resources were sucked in there. There was a lot of people that said uh, USAID that really carried the mantle of leadership in this area when they decided to pull out from several of the countries in the region, it really had a negative impact. I just hope that we can reflect on that and really celebrate the power of coming together and the power of, of, of new types of partnership, and the power of leadership as really being demonstrated in Senegal. I also want to take us back to the genesis of the Ouagadougou partnership. And I want to congratulate all of those champions that were really at it, um, you know, including Amy Choi that I don't see here, which is very instrumental, and Monica Kerrigan that I see sitting there. A lot of the commit you know, very strong commitment to the region. People who just say, we're not going to let this region die. We're not going to let family planning disappear from this region. So I want to thank that. And I want to celebrate the perseverance. And really, that if you focus on it, you can do it. And I think, um, you know, we're all excited today. We want to celebrate the success of, of Senegal. And, and I want to take us back to, to leadership. Frankly, we've been talking about it. And it is so nice to be sitting here and be able to say, you see it, you know, you can touch it. Um, I was sitting there with several people in this room in London when, when uh, Madam Minister got up and made this commitment on stage to the world about what Senegal was going to do in terms of increasing their budget for, for contraceptive and family planning, uh, mobilizing, opening the doors to the public sector, making very good uh, policy decision about democratizing, demedicalizing, and decentralizing. So really setting the stage. So I think it can happen. What I want to say is that I'm trying to see what can we learn from this success. What is really at the base of this success? Because if we do that, and we know that, then we can try to apply this in the region, which is really our target so that we can, we can really make progress. So we have very hopeful results, no doubt. Some are saying, well, frankly, given the resources that are being put in this country for the last 30 years, it's modest. Yes, it is modest. There are some other ways we can look at it. Uh, I, 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 I hope Roy Jacobstein here, who is very committed to looking at progress from the lens of, of, of demand that we are satisfying. In fact, if we start looking at it from that lens, we're going to see that actually the progress is even bigger. It's not just the contraceptive problem, but we are moving the needle. We are, if we focus on demand and filling that demand, we are, and I hope, Roy, you can, you can help us in the discussion, share a little bit of that. But let's look at the stuff that's working. Uh, clearly, uh, Putting the government in the driver's seat for Senegal seems to be the way to go because it allows you both to have the very strong leadership, but it also gives you a plan. There is a development plan. In this particular case, there is an emergent plan for Senegal. And all of the actors who are so committed can work toward that plan rather than having their separate activities uncoordinated. So that was one of, the, one of the learning. We see the power of partnership. We see what you can do when these organizations really put their organizational hat at the door and come together and say, how can we use our different expertise to complement each other to support the government? So that seems to be working. We see the power of contraceptive security. If you solve that problem, you might just solve the whole issue. 
because a lot of people are saying, if the commodities are there, people will use it. And you see the woman in the movie as saying, my husband is not interested, but I care about my own health. I'll go ahead and find my ways of doing it. And making sure that we have contraceptive supply is definitely part of the solution. If we can guarantee an interrupted supply, it would be good. So, and finally, we are seeing that it's possible because I think until Senegal is showing this very fast result, a lot of people were saying, we're just never gonna do it in this region. So I, now we know that it's possible. So I am very, very uh, hopeful. Um, I'd like to come back in a little bit. I don't wanna monopolize the whole conversation, but I do wanna ask to come back in the challenges and come back to what is it that we really need to do? Because there's really no time to, 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 to really celebrate and say, because it's progress, it's good, um, it opens the door, but we have so much to do. And not only that, but we have so many opportunities we now have that we did not have. So um, again, thank you for all the donors. Thank you, Senegal, and, and your strong leadership for opening the door. And I think for those of us who care about the Francophone region and care about family planning and its incredible role, not just in health, but in economic development, um, I think we, are, we have a momentum. And I'd like us to build on that momentum moving forward. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Micah, uh, Mari Stopes has uh, a long record of building uh, work on family planning with the private sector, social franchises, and mobile outreach clinics. Can you talk about the experience of Mari Stopes in Senegal working with the private sector to expand access? Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, and thank you, everybody, for, for coming today and talk about Senegal, um, one of my favorite topics. Um, and it's great to be here with, with this incredible leadership uh, that we've mentioned and we will continue to mention. Um, I think one, of, one leadership aspect that I'd like to highlight is also the leadership of the women. And coming to your point, as Mari Stopes, we, we go out with more mobile outreach teams or, or we go uh, engage the private sector. But actually, the leadership is in the woman who chooses to go there. And what we do is we facilitate that access for her. And I think in general, in general, for this amazing progress that Senegal has made, if we want that to really get cemented uh, in, 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 in the society, we need to look at her a little bit more even and maybe ask her, revolutionary concept, let's ask her, <laughs> what does she want? Where does she want it? What is she willing to pay or not? Does she talk to her husband or not? Is she even married or not? So let's ask her how we can, how can we make sure that she has this access? And I think franchising and outreach teams and clinics and getting products available, all these things help her in getting this, this access. And you know, it's not, there's not one woman in Senegal. There are a lot of women who have very different needs. And we, as the government, as Amari Stopes, we need to know those needs. We need to know those needs so that we can be flexible. And obviously, the role of the government is very different from the role of somebody or some organization like Mari Stopes. But together, and with Interhealth and, and other partners in, in Senegal, I think together we can, yeah, we can make a, a network for her. But what I would say, taking forward and, and capitalizing on this success that we've we've seen over the last couple of years, is to to really get to know her a little bit better and to see what her how can we make it easier for her? Like, she can make these decisions. We know that. Let's make, give her that opportunity to make those decisions, and let's not assume that things are a problem which might not actually be a problem. There might be, in five years' time, I hope that we will talk about different challenges than the ones that we're talking about today, because we've talk, spoken to her, and she's saying, well, actually, my main issue is, I'm not going to fill that in because I don't know. Because we need to, we need to talk about, not talk to her a little bit more. But some of the things I think also with Mari Stokes, we, we, our outreach team sometimes only starts at 4 p.m. Why? Because the woman has told us like, it's no point in showing up at nine o'clock. I'm still preparing the, the food and I'm getting my kids ready and I'm at the field and, and there we were at nine o'clock and we're like, there's nobody here. <laughs> but we come at four, and suddenly everything changes. 
So that's a very small example, very practical example of why outreach teams are, are really interesting. Um, but for me, you know, for me, I've lived four and a half years, almost five years in Senegal. I am a better person because of the Senegalese woman. I, I dress better. To <laughs> <laughs> but not just that, just a lot of things. I, they, are, they are extremely resourceful and they are extreme, not just Senegalese women, women everywhere, but the Senegalese women for this topic. And let's just listen to her. Let her lead a little bit, maybe. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. Um, <laughs> Dr. Duff, I wonder if you could speak a little bit more about your relationship with the US government and with USAID and how they have been supporting the work that you have been pioneering on family planning. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, you know, when I came first in 2009 as a <clears throat> chief of division, one of my most support was uh, USAID. Uh, the division was here for eight months without anyone on board. And uh, you can suppose that uh, there, is, there was anything there. But when I came, I get the visit from USAID. I have um, fortunately read a lot of about this division. And uh, when I, they come, I say to them, I want this, I don't want this. And they say, OK. Through the, the discussion, they understand. And all they say is that we think we can support you because we, we, we see you are committed to do the progress. And since then, we are working together directly through USAID and through also the uh, NGOs, the CAs who are uh, making on the field uh, the programs which have been funded by USAID. Uh, really, what I can say there is they are just looking what was our plan, what we want to do, and they support it. They never go and try to influence what we are doing. It's, it's, I think this, is, this was very important for the country. And uh, this maybe helped to uh, strengthen our leadership on our position. And more and more, the others came and uh, helped us. Now we see that uh, we are, they are going to support us in another way, what we call the direct fund. This is also very important, because we are doing our work plan, annual work plan, and go negotiation to USAID, and they support us. I think this is a very good uh, partnership. And I hope they will continue on, on that. Also, we had other partners who are supporting us uh, through uh, the urban uh, uh, initiative. As in, as initiative, we have Bill and Melinda Gates. We have also the Hewlett Foundation are supporting, and uh, I, I'm, 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 I, I don't want to forget anyone, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, UNFPA also is supporting us, and I think uh, each of them is doing all what they can do to support really Senegal, and their participatory approach, their understanding is very helpful, and I hope they will continue and reinforce that. And hopefully we'll get back to the issue of how do you coordinate all these donors and all these partners. But before we get there, I want to ask Pop to talk a little bit about, in a little bit more detail, about the informed push model, which is both a remarkable success and it raises questions about uh, whether it can be sustainable, whether it can be transferred to government control under the, the PNA. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit about why it's worked 
and whether its success is going to be assured in the, in the months ahead when the, uh, when the initial funding is withdrawn? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful to, um, to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for the initiative of uh, introducing an innovation. I think that's probably the best way to look at that, is that what can we learn from the innovation? It, is, it happens to be the informed push model, and it happens to be a very critical element of family, any family planning program, if you don't have those supplies, and if you don't have a steady supply of this. But the innovation itself is really pretty simple. It's just recognizing, and this will give me a chance actually to talk about the health workforce issue, because this is really an intervention that is directly geared toward the, 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 the health worker and maybe improving the environment in which the health worker works. That's really what it is, because if you take that task from a already a very, very sort of a, a tasked health worker who is expected to do so much. And you say, you know, the task of, of forecasting and ordering the supplies and monitoring that could probably be done by somebody else who has more free time. It could really be focused. And if that person is motivated to do this, then it will happen. So that's what the pu informed push model, that's a major intervention is it is a, a public-private partnership model, if you want to, but it just demonstrates the power of really having a little private sector initiative come in to supplement the, the, the public sector work. That's, that's really what it is. But, but for me, the important part is that we probably have thousands and thousands of innovations like that. We just have to focus on it. We just have to focus what we normally do, because innovation is generally bringing another way of doing something and being more efficient at it. Um, I, I think it's a, it has a tremendous opportunity. I think the questions that are still there to be answered are real questions. How do we take this to the national level? Uh, the governments have the mean to actually support this. There is very quick interest developing not only in Senegal and the Africa region, about applying this to other sectors. I know UNFPA is looking at applying this thing in Togo, and uh, some people are saying, why not apply it to other, uh, other, other area too? But, but I think that's what it is. I think the, the lessons learned about, about IPM and the informed push model is that, is that our current system of fraud with inefficiencies. The fact that we need to do public-private partnership is just the current system is not performing at 100%. And there is a potential by actually focusing on what you have without any additional resources coming in. By shifting things around, you could do a lot. Because in, in most of the countries, I was in Kenya recently, I had a good conversation about a vibrant, uh, private sector development a group that's coming up, it, it is very clear that there is some excess capacity that you find in the private sector that could be tapped on, especially in terms of workforce and workforce production and workforce potential. And, uh, and so if we do this, if we, if we learn to tap into areas that we have not tapped, mostly because we've been blinded by our silos, by the way we see our work. It's music to my ear to hear the minister here say, everybody has their role to play, that we should open up the door, we should have. If we do that and we continue to do that, we will find hundreds and hundreds of other push models. But that's the beauty of the push model. It's just, it's an innovation. It's now proving that it can work. If you sustain this thing about going months and months without any interrupted supply, then immediately the good results will follow. So, so yes, it is a crucial part of the innovation that was introduced, but it, it takes everybody from the pharmacist to the uh, depot manager to the providers and, and, and to the government, and you definitely need strong policies. So we, we, 
we will be focusing in the next few years about strategies for scaling this up. But it is, it is a very, very important innovation. Um, and, and I'm happy that we have, we have a chance to see its results uh, today. Micah, as <coughs> promising as, as the work with the private sector is, there are big challenges also. And I wonder if you could speak about challenges that Mary Stopes is seeing, both in the work with expanding uh, access through the private sector, but also in reaching young people, and perhaps your work with the clinic at the university. If you could speak about those two challenge areas. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah, we, as Mary Stopes International in Senegal, we have a, um, a very, I would say, a very small innovation. <laughs> um, at the University of Dakar. Um, this was actually something that was started because the student associations, or the student association from the Dakar University knocked on our door um, and said, those services that you have, um, can you bring them <laughs> to us? We want them. Um, and we are like, oh, okay. Um, and USAID actually was there with to support this, this, this very small innovation. Um, and so there's a little clinic embedded into the campus in the, at the university that serves the reproductive health needs of young people. So very excited about it, very oh, very innovative. Lots of USAID people coming around. And I look at these results and I'm like, nobody's taking up a family planning method. Are we talking about that? Yes, we are talking about it. And we're seeing that change. Slowly, but surely, we're seeing it change. It started off, I think, and the, uh, speaking to the, the midwives and the students and the students who go around the campus and, and speak to the other students, people like, wanted to have information. And the le level of, and I think going to a challenge, the level of knowledge that these students, educated, have about their reproductive health is quite shockingly low to be honest, um, they have very little idea of how to protect themselves from sexual transmitted diseases or unwanted or pregnancies for that matter. That's a big challenge. There's another very big challenge and, and my, my Senegalese colleagues can, I'm sure, vouch for this. We do not talk about this. Unmarried sex, uh, sexually active students don't exist in Senegal officially, but they do and we know that they do. But this is a very different, I can say this here in Washington, I wouldn't say this like this in Senegal. Um, and it's a challenge because not only for the young woman to admit to herself, let alone to anybody outside of herself, that she is sexually active and therefore needs to take up, needs to protect herself, is for her, is for her absolutely massive because she is then putting herself outside of the societal norm. If she admits this to herself, then that means that her mother or her aunt or her father or anybody will possibly reject her from the, from, from the family. So it's, it's a massive thing for a young person to ask for a family planning method because then you're admitting to yourself that you're sexually active, which we've had very interesting conversations with people who have STIs and they say, but I've never had sex. How is that possible? Because um, our, I have to say our midwives are, are, are amazing in, in finding the language to be able to talk to these girls and, and boys, actually, obviously. Very quite often it's the, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the boyfriend that comes with. And, it, and these are extremely difficult challenges and we touched upon it yesterday evening during the dinner. We can't go around yet saying, oh, we need sexual health for young people in Senegal. It's, it's so important. We can't do that, we'll break something. But we can talk, again, we go back to maybe my first point, we can go back to the, to, this, to the student or to this young person and try to find a way so that we can help her get the information she needs so that whatever choice she wants to make, she can make safely. And I think that is, is a, <laughs> it's a challenge because you know, I work for Mari Stopes, we're like, how many family planning methods did you, I'm like three in the last month for, you know, it's not, doesn't seem to rock your world, but it is actually making a massive impact. And, and I think we need, to, we need to have that patience. And you know, as, as, the, as a government, we need to have that patience. As the donors, we need to have that patience. And we need to realize that this is a huge shift 
Um, you know, and, and also, if we think of ourselves, we don't necessarily feel want to talk to our children or when we were children, talk to our parents about this kind of thing. So where do they go for information? Dr. Duff, I said I would come back to you about this issue of coordination because one of the, one of the lessons I think that we see in Senegal is that if the government is in the driver's seat and can coordinate the different partners and the different uh, donors, then good things can follow. Um, but it's not easy. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit about uh, how you and your government have been able to do this coordinating role and what lessons you would have for other countries as they try to sort of harness the different partners uh, to uh, support their plan. Yes, <clears throat> when we elaborate the, the action plan on family planning, uh, we put on site different platforms like uh, committees, technical committee, subcommittees on demand creation, delivery services, and uh, security for contraceptive to be sure that everybody will be inside. We, we do some kind of co-lead, uh, government co-lead and a partner co-lead. So if we do the invitation, everybody can come and see what happens. No one is missing. And we propose that uh, each semester we meet the minister to show uh, the progress. That's what we do. The subcommittees are meeting each month, and the technical committee is meeting uh, each trimester. That's what we do. And also, uh, we propose to do different reviews with regions to see what is their progress. With partners, we go to the regions, share with them, and this trimester we call all of them in the central level, and each region presents his success and problems. That's what we, we do, and this uh, help uh, everybody to to be to stay committed on the on the plan. But as you know, we we have the family planning, but we have other programs like uh, uh, maternal health, child survival, and nutrition. Last year, we proposed to gather all these committees because we had a lot of meetings. We uh, had a RMNCHA committee, led by the minister. And we meet each trimester. And each semester, we meet the minister to tell her what we have done. That's the way we did. Uh, to follow our program and to be sure that we are making progress. If, if any problem, problem happens, we try to find out a solution together with the support of partners. Thank you. I have lots more questions I could ask, but I know there's lots of people here <coughs> who have important uh, questions they'd like to uh, ask our panelists. So I'm going to ask, there's a microphone that will be coming around. We'll take maybe three at a time. Please identify yourself and uh, ask a question. Um, and then we can do a couple of rounds, hopefully, uh, for that. If you have a question for a specific panelist, let me know. But we're not going to have everyone respond to everything. We'll try to do it uh, more targeted. So let's open up to some questions. OK, we have in the way back. Thank you very much to the panel. I'm Lisa Nichols. I'm with Apt Associates. And we are the uh, lead implementing partner for health system strengthening. But I want to commend the panelists for speaking about how well Senegal has taken the lead in improving access. And I would like to ask if you could talk a little bit about community-based health insurance. There are some differentiators here that Senegal has compared to the rest of the region, and that's in uh, innovative health financing. 
And I know the Mutual de Sante and Access, the president has just made a commitment to universal health coverage and how important that is to expanding access. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we had another question back here. Uh, good morning, honorable ministers and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Rosemary Seguero. I'm a president of an organization called Hope for Tomorrow. Uh, we focus on conflicts, violence, and uh, also rural areas of Africa. I'm from Kenya. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Awa Honorable, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, my mine is just a comment to say thank you for leading the women health. We focus in the rural areas. How do we we want the women in the rural areas of Senegal and Africa to be reached and also work with us as civil society, the civil the civil society on the ground and us here in the United States as women who are born and raised in Africa. We will support you and anything we can do, work with you as business or organization, let us know. So thank you so much for reaching out for women in the rural areas and thanks for the men also for being concerned about the women in Africa and in your own country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, and we have back here, Priya. <coughs> Hi, my name is Priya Agrawal. I'm Executive Director of for Mothers, and we've had the pleasure to work with IntraHealth and the Minister of Health um, on the Inform Push model. As you mentioned, um, we're actually now at that stage where we're thinking about how are we going to go from a donor-dependent model to handing over to the government, and there'll probably be some kind of transition phase that we're looking at now. There are other countries not in that region, but actually in South Asia that are approaching us to implement a similar model. Is there something either from the intra-health perspective or the government perspective that you would do differently if you were starting Inform Push now to enable that transition to the government sooner? Okay, let's take one more. Um, Thank you very much. I'm Roger Mark D'Souza from the Woodrow Wilson Center. Um, Papka, you specifically talked about um, looking at a bigger context for West Africa, and you mentioned that maybe we have now an opportunity to expand family planning in the context of the economic development agenda. Could you talk more about that, please? Okay, thank you. Let's turn to the panel. I'm going to start with Pap on the question of the informed push model. What would you do differently? Um, you know, I would probably <laughs> have a lot more conversation uh, with the government. Because this was an innovation, it had not been tried. There, was, uh, there were few places where you could actually go to see how it would work. Because I think it was kind of a created, tailored, and, and all. But clearly, what I would do differently would be much, much more dialogue about what the government might need in terms of scaling up, rather than having a very successful intervention suddenly saying, God, it works so well, let's do it. But I think it just, I would have pushed the envelope a little bit about the conversation. This always, one of my favorite subject is that if we are the donors or the implementers, or at least the people with the resources, what can we do to level the playing field? But the playing field is never leveled in our field because we are the ones with the resources and then they're the people who just will have a tendency to say yes. So we know that that is changing. We know that we really have leaders that have a vision that can engage in dialogue, so I would do that. I would, I would engage in much more substantial discussion about the possibility of something like that and try to get a commitment, even, even know that it's gonna be hard, but a commitment, rather than let's test it, it works, and then now let's, let's go and shop it with the government. That's what I would do differently. So, Dr. Daff, uh, would you like to come in on the community-based health insurance? Yeah. <clears throat> um. It is not an expected question, but um, let's say, as you may know, our president made a very uh, important 
commitment to address the equity on the people. For that, uh, he, he proposed to have an universal access to services, to health services. And he makes make the emphasis on the vulnerable people, meaning the under five and the women. Now in Senegal, you know, uh, services for under five people are free at the uh, deep, uh, health post and the center de santé. And the consultation is also free in the hospitals. The C-section is free for all women in the country. But this is not sufficient to afford the health services for everybody. That's why we propose to have mutuals, and we are organizing ourselves with the support of the government. And now, uh, in the field, we are going to the department by department, put met together the committees to have a, at least a mutual by local governments. And uh, each people who contribute, I think it is around uh, 3,500 francs CFA to, for as, uh, last, uh, as a prime, and the government do the same. This is what we are now planning uh, to do in Senegal. And uh, we expect to have maybe 75% by, uh, by 2017. Uh, I think this is very crucial because even we have the services in place, if people cannot afford the serv these services, they go don't go to the facilities. I think this is what something missing and uh, it is important to, to have it. But we know there are a lot of content to organize all that, and maybe also to support the health system. It is important to give support on that, technical support, maybe financial support on some aspects. Okay, thank you. And this <coughs> last question about economic development sure. harks back certainly to the yeah. importance of a multi-sectoral approach also. Sure. It looks at why does family planning matter not only for health but sure. also for development. Great. And the importance of bringing in not just the Minister of Health but the Minister of Finance and, and Education and all these issues. And I think that was yeah, directed to you, Pop, if right. you want to talk about that. Sure. You know, I think it was Mark's question. And I, I think the I think the issue for me is the courage to have the conversation because right now there are so many other considerations that we are still, that causes us to still kind of tiptoe around the subject. Um, while there's an opportunity, Africa is growing, investment in, in the human capital, I think Madam Minister just said that in, in her opening Word, it says our population keeps growing, and as long as the population is growing faster than the economy is growing, then you're going to have this imbalance, and it, the challenges are just going to. But it seems like the region is not yet ready to talk about it in those terms. I mean, I think the demographic dividend is making sense. I think it's a good tool uh, to talk to our. Uh, uh, legislature, decision makers, um, and, and I think that's what it is. I think that's what the demographic dividend really is, is that you're going to make these gains so that you can invest in education, you can invest to all of the pillars of good economic development. But it's just, I think it's ripe. I think we're underestimating the power of the youth and of the very educated population to understand these dynamics and be courageous to just talk about it. Everybody in West Africa, everybody in Sub-Saharan Africa will tell you that they want to become like the Asian tigers. They want to become, when, they, when you say who you're looking at, they say Singapore or Thailand or these countries. What needs to be told to them is that these countries 
very early on factor in the family planning and population in, in, in their thinking. And we are still not having that straightforward conversation because we are still trying to manage the religious sensibilities and the cultural sensibilities. And frankly, the very big uh, fertility prevalence, preval preference that seems to still exist in a lot of countries in the region. They're just people just like big families. And, and so it, it makes this conversation difficult. But that's, that's, I think that's what we need to do. And I think there is no, it's clear that we have a lot of opportunity to engage in, in activities that could be very easily linked to economic development and, and other youth employment and so forth. All right, let's take one more round of questions um, and then we'll uh, have to <coughs> close up. All right, so let's, let's start with, over here with Perry. Perry. Thank you. Uh, Minister Kolsek, Dr. Daff, Pop, Micah, this is a, an excellent discussion. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to get to work with you, each of you. Um, in two of the points that were made, one by Dr. Daff in talking about his vision for the interventions that are, are going to um, achieve 27% by the end of this year, um, and, and Pop also spoke to um, the importance of the public-private partnership. And, um, and this is highly relevant in, in the mobile outreach that Dr. Daff is speaking of and the informed push model. Um, it's, it's a model of, of um, outsourcing to the private sector. So what I would love are comments from, from, from each of you about how we can think of doing this differently in the future so that we can, we can see examples of the government making these contracts themselves to uh, private sector actors. Um, I think Senegal has the potential to be among the first to make this happen, and I'd love to hear more about your appetite for that and, um, and how it might work. Over here, Susan. Thank you so much for this really informative and inspiring discussion and esteemed panelists. I'm Susan Cohen from the Guttmacher Institute and um, I'm reacting to a comment that Micah made about how um, um, unmarried young women in Senegal do not exist. Um, something else that doesn't exist is abortion, um, except that now we know it does because my colleagues were just in Senegal a couple weeks ago and released uh, the first ever national um, incident study of abortion in Senegal with our partners. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mangle the French, but it's um, the Centre uh, for Research on Human Development, um, or Development Human, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, but what we discovered um, is that there are 50,000 abortions that occur in Senegal every year, and half of them require uh, treatment for medical complications. Now, obviously, this, um, this is a subject that is separate from family planning, but integrally related. And it's my understanding this has opened a new conversation in Senegal about ways to deal with um, the issue of unsafe abortion there. But, but relevant, relevant to this discussion directly is that this is clearly another very obvious and inescapable indicator of the unmet need for being able to prevent more unintended pregnancies and increase access to contraceptive services. So if any of the panelists would like to comment about how to use, um, how this new information may be able to um, be used to confront some of these difficult subjects, but that are very much a reality in women's lives, I'd be interested to hear. And we have one last question. Let's go over to the back. Yeah, she's been it's a, oh. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. I'm Fatima Kone. I'm the director 
of marketing of Adimas, agency of marketing social in Senegal. I'm very proud to be here today with my colleague Momodou, and we just want to add a bit on, of what Mike said on insight. Knowing that uh, one of the key main, um, the key um, work pattern is for Ademas is to work with the Ministry of Health, uh, its division for uh, its division for uh, reproductive health, and also uh, we are funding by USAID. Just coming back to insight, uh, Dr. Daff said that we worked on the communication for the planning family called Montrenef. We, Ademas, uh, we work based on evidence, which means that we do research, we base our findings on what have been done through the country. Uh, we use lots of also studies that were done by Ushu, uh, just to understand how Anta, you've seen here, lives, how Anta behaves, what's her needs, and what she, she lives for. And that communication campaign was based on it, and we put our focus on the determinant that we were sure that uh, she can change her behavior. But also what we found that was that um, study shows that yes, as she said on the, on the, on the film, on the video, yes, she uh, can have the leadership to go and take a mod ma modern method. But in most of the case, she also needs her husband's um, support. That's why we stress our, um, our communication on how Anta and his husband can talk about PF and have the lead to go together and take that opportunity. Thank you. I also, uh, uh, I'm, sorry. I think we're going to have to stop. Oh, just one, it, it was just uh, an input. About. Uh, sorry, just and because of time, we're going to okay, move yeah, on. Okay, yeah, fine. But thank fine. you. Um, and because of time, what I'm going to let, I'm going to run through the panel and let you respond to any of these comments about Perry's comment about the private sector, the question of unmet need for family planning that's reflected in this study on, um, on abortion, and the uh, issues raised by our colleague from Ademas, and then any other concluding remarks you'd like to make. So let's start with Micah. Um, OK. Um, <coughs> Thank you for the questions, and thank you, Susan, for the challenging question of abortion. I think um, you're absolutely right. It shows the unmet need. Um, and it's, uh, I think, in, in, in populations like the youth, uh, the consequences of having an unwanted pregnancy are so severe that they very often opt for an unsafe uh, abortion uh, if um, they prefer that to suffering through an unwanted pregnancy. Uh, and this is something that, again, we, in Senegal, we, we, need, to, we need to acknowledge and, and face up to. And I think there's a, there's a task force working on um, policy reform in Senegal. And there's women's lawyers groups and other, other groups, Sikil Jigen and, and Agis, who are showing tremendous leadership uh, in, in Senegal to, to change these abortion laws so that hopefully um, these numbers will go down. And then with the family planning uh, contraceptive preference rate that's going up, hopefully we'll, we'll see some really real changes in that. And um, just maybe closing um, on the insight, yes, the husband, of course the husband, but, or and, um, not only the husband. And I think we, we in Senegal, we, it's safer to say yes with the husband. And, and that's obviously the ideal. Of course, that's what we want. But there are many women who, whose husband might not want it and who she wants it, since she also can make that choice again. And there's also many women who actually don't have a husband 
maybe not as many. Mm -hmm. They're not the majority, but they're there. Uh, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget about them. And they might be a little bit more dif difficult to reach, um, both if we talk about leadership, both, both for her to show her own leadership, because for her it's an even more difficult choice to get family planning. So I will always, um, hopefully, we can always uh, try to accommodate that as well. Thank you. Dr. Duff, any responses and closing remarks? Yes, um, for the public-private sector, what I can say is that uh, obviously we do not have a lot of experience on that related to the government side and the private uh, side. But since the minister came on board in 2012, we see we are, we are having some experience. For example, with uh, Orange, uh, we get some uh, convention uh, to send an SMS about diabetes and other programs. Uh, coming back to family to the family planning, I think for the franchise, we we must do a lot of uh, effort to pursue that and to expand it. Even the the, the private sector is uh, really concentrated in Dakar and chess. But I think they are doing a very great job. Uh, I know also, uh, with uh, ICF World Bank, the minister had organized private sector who are working on the health area. Uh, they are trying to do uh, something. And we have a division who uh, are just focusing on this private public sector. Uh, actions. For the abortion, I'll just be clear that know that uh, abortion is forbidden in Senegal. And uh, it's not only the issue for health sector. I think it's an uh, uh, issue of the whole society. And right now, there are some activists who are working on that. Uh, and they are trying to move on uh, some issues, like if, if uh, the pregnancy came after rap or incest, I think uh, half of Senegalese people accept that in this case, we can do the abortion. I know also that uh, many leaders, like uh, uh, elected people, on the National Assembly are supporting that. But uh, it's a long way to, to achieve. That's the reality. For the, the um, health system, we have what we call the post abortion care program. Yes, as, as the technician, if someone came, we can treat them, help them, support him. And maybe if he needs a family planning methods, we help them to get it. Uh, I think, really, if we develop the, the program, the family planning program, maybe this will be a secondary question in my, my vision, my view. Thank you. Thank you. And Pop, we're going to give you a, a brief last a brief word. Last words, yeah. So, you know, I too hope that we, Senegal and other countries, will get to a point where our family planning programs are designed for all the, that need it. I think it is restrictive to say that you're only going to look at married women. I think, especially in light of uh, our, what you just said, if we look at the, how young the population is. So I hope that we collectively we can come up with ways to influence and change the policies so that the programs are really far reaching, much further reaching than they currently are because there are restrictions. If you say you're only going to look at married women and all that. So I, 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 you know, having said that, there, there are challenges. But I, but I do think we should put it on our site as something we want to solve. Because the programs are going to continue to be inefficient unless we get to a point where they could be more inclusive and much broader. That's what I want to say on that. I, I want to make an appeal to the people in this room about bringing the private sector in family planning. 
we're not seeing very good progress right now. Of, of all the initiatives that we see, if you take out the pharmaceuticals, who clearly have an interest in this thing, we're not seeing a lot of private sector engagement in family planning. So we need to do our part of advocacy globally also. We need to convince these companies why it would be important for companies in the extraction in the industry, in the logistic industry, there's room for them. If people want to go beyond corporate social responsibility and they want to make their footprint on development, family planning would be a good, good way to do that. And we need that message to be loud and clear uh, for the companies up here before we can appeal to companies or while we're appealing to companies also um, in, in, in the North. And since uh, we are passionate and our core work is, is, is the health workforce, I do want to make a plug also for that. I think there's a, there's a lot of, there's a, lot of uh, a tendency to sort of either try to bypass or to continue to blame the health workers in this, rightly so, well taken. So we have our work to do to, again, we still have a lot of uh, challenges, a lot of barriers to access, which I think can be solved by doing a better job with the health workers. But, but again, I think it's, it's a critical element of the piece. Until we have a decent ratio of health workers to population, again, we're gonna continue to be in a very difficult situation. So I wanna make an appeal for us to continue, not to forget that investment, that it just won't happen. I think these will be the link, these would be, these are the people who are the link between the systems and the communities, and we need to find ways, you know, to correct the deficiency that exists, but keep up the investment in that group. And then finally, I, I really would like to take the opportunity to thank USAID for its ongoing um, involvement in this, CSIS, of course, for putting putting together this wonderful, wonderful gathering and allowing Senegal to showcase its program. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Hewlett Foundation, the Packard Foundation, all of the, the good champions that keep caring for the region. Um, it's the right thing to do, and I hope you'll keep at it. Well, I think everyone can uh, appreciate that we could have gone on much longer, but in interest of our engaging next panel on the important issues of funding, um, I hope you'll all join me in thanking this panel.